Hi there, this is Alison from Freddy Loves Crochet and I'm back today with a really quick um, and hopefully helpful tutorial on how to decrease um, granny clusters. So, for example, when you are making a cardigan and you want your sleeves to taper so that they're not the same width from the armhole all the way down to the, the cuffs, um, you will need to put in some little... Um, decreases so that your arm it it will taper down like that and become narrower towards the end of the sleeve um, there are several ways in crochet to do this and um, this is just one of them that I'm going to show you today um, but hopefully you'll find it helpful so a few tips are that when you're putting your um, starting with your sleeves you should always start the round if you're just doing granny clusters like this on sleeves at the the, the bottom part underneath the arm so at the, the very sort of lowest point of the armhole underneath the arm and you'll go round um making your clusters in each one of the spaces and then joining um to the first um chain that you made on that round and then once you've done that you're going to turn your work instead of just going round and round and round in a spiral you're going to then turn your work and that try that keeps your seam um a bit straighter and stops you veering off to one angle so what i've done here so this decrease is a process of two rows um meaning that you set up the decrease on row one and then you complete it on row two. So I would always aim to put these decreases in somewhere on the underside of the arm towards the back as well. So you want it somewhere close to that. And so identify where that is, where you are within your round, and then place your decreases where you want them. You do want them really to be um, always around the same place. You can't always necessarily get them in a straight line, but you can put them in around the same place to get that nice tapered look. So I have already completed the round one of the two round decrease or two round or two row decrease. And as you'll see, I've got a stitch marker in here. And you may have noticed that instead of having three stitches like I have in all the others and three double crochets for a granny stitch, I've actually just got two and I have put the um, stitch marker in between the V kind of of those two. So it's right in the middle and that's where you're going to place your hook. Now I've put a stitch marker there because it helps us to remember for the second row or round of this decrease that when we, because it can be quite hard to, to um, spot it and really easy to miss. So I put a stitch marker in there so that we know when we get back to it for the next round um, what we're going to do. So I have been around, I've finished here, I've put my stitch marker in and now I need to turn one. So I'm going to do my chain of three and then I'm going to turn my work. I've got quite a big bulky cardigan out of shot here, so it's quite tricky. And then I'm going to carry on as normal doing my granny clusters, which is three in each space. And I'm going to keep doing that until I get round to the stitch marker. So I've got to go all the way around there. So I will meet you. I'll pause it. You don't need to pause it, you can carry on watching it unless you're doing this along with me. But I will um, rejoin you in a moment when I'm at this point here. Okay, so I'm now approaching my stitch marker in the middle of those two stitches. And I've got still two um, places to place my um, clusters of three first. So I'm going to do the first one as usual. Two and then three. And then I am not going to work into that next one and I'm not going to work into the one after it. So the two spaces where you would normally place your treble cluster, your double crochet clusters, sorry, they are um, not going to be worked in. Instead, we're going to skip over that and we're going to place our three here in this gap between the two where my stitch marker is so I'm going to take that out now so it's in between the v of those two kind of things they make like a v sign don't they so instead I'm going to skip over the next space where you'd normally have placed your granny cluster and I'm going to put it there so you can see I've skipped over that one 
I've placed it in there. Now, so because we're trying to decrease, we're now going to skip this one as well because you don't want to carry on in, like making the same amount of clusters. So instead of putting two in there, I've just put one in there and that's how you decrease. So I'm now at the end of my round because of where I've decided to place my decreases. So instead of working in that, I am now just going to join to the top of the chain. If you aren't quite at the end of the round, you would just miss that one out and then go to the next um, chain space. It look or not chain space between the clusters. It looks like it's going to create a huge hole and it is slightly bigger, but it's not too far off, really, the size of the other ones. And because, you know, this type of stitch is holy and gappy like that, it's quite easy to disguise it. You'll now see that that... Um, cluster of three doubles is in between those two doubles that we did for the first round so you've got round one of the decrease is to make the two round two of the decrease repeat is to put the um your regular group of three doubles into the middle between those two and you skip the spaces before and after so you can then carry on doing more decreases as and when you want to, depending on how much you want to taper it, but keep them in the same area um, so that they're not too spread out and that'll give you a nice clean taper. Um, I hope that's been useful for you today. Please give me a like, a subscribe or even a comment. Um, I appreciate all the support. Thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.